brine seared and baked chicken breasts. This is such an easy way to ensure that your chicken doesn't get dry when you cook it, and it only takes an extra 15 minutes. Um, so brining is something people aren't super familiar with. They usually think about it only around Thanksgiving. And they're like, oh, I better brine that ginormous 20 pound frozen turkey that I forgot to take out of the fridge. Uh, but it can actually be used on all kinds of cuts of meat. And when you have something small like a chicken breast, it can take only about 15 minutes to really add a lot of tenderness to that chicken. So I have about a cup and a half of hot water. Um, you can bring it to a boil on the stove. I just threw it in the microwave for a couple minutes. The ratio on a brine is, at least for smaller items, I go by one tablespoon of salt to a cup of water. So I'm gonna have four cups of water total. So I'm gonna dissolve a fourth cup of salt into my hot water here. You just want it at least mostly dissolved. If there's a few granules at the bottom, that's okay. So a lot of Thanksgiving or um, brines for larger cuts of meat, you'll see some aromatics in there to add flavor. Oh, look at that little scrap of garlic peel. Just take that away. Nothing to see here. Uh, but you'll see a lot of aromatics in there, like some garlic, lemon, herbs, uh, all that good stuff, which is wonderful. And you would probably want to add that to your water as you're heating it to infuse the flavor. However, those brines are gonna be sitting for 24 hours. This is gonna be 15 minutes. So to me, it's more of a waste of ingredients because they really won't absorb the flavor from the herbs, the onion, all that good stuff. So we have our hot water that dissolved the salt. I've got some cold water here with some ice. We're gonna add the hot water to that. The reason we do it this way is you do not wanna pour hot salt water over your chicken. It will immediately start to cook it. So now we've got some cold water here with salt dissolved in it. Four cups of water, fourth a cup of salt, not as perfect. I like to do just a few ice cubes to make sure it's really cold, but don't do too much because then you have a ton of ice floating in there, which makes it difficult. So I've got two chicken breasts here. You can do a whole pack of these at a time, but for today, just two will do. Another good thing to note is um, smaller containers usually work better. If you have a giant container and just a little bit of meat, you're gonna need a lot more brine water to get it covered. So we're gonna pour our cold salt water over these guys. Perfect. And that's it. You just stick it in the fridge and let it sit there for a minimum of 15 minutes. For chicken breasts, you could do probably up to an hour, but I wouldn't go over that because it'll start to um, affect the outer layer texture. So we'll pop back in in 15 minutes and get these guys cooking. All right, so you wanna take your chicken out of the brine and always rinse anytime you brine. So rinse the chicken off and then you wanna pat it really dry. So we wanna get a good sear on it, which is that nice brown crust and you will not get a good sear if you start with a wet piece of chicken. So I've got my chicken over here. I've got a skillet heating to medium high heat and we're just gonna add salt and pepper to the pretty side of these, if you will. Anytime you're cooking a piece of meat, you always wanna put it presentation side down first. That's when your skillet's gonna be hottest. It's gonna allow you to get the nicest looking side on there. So we're just gonna wait for the skillet to get good and hot. All right, so our skillet's almost ready. We're gonna add, this is grapeseed oil. You can use any high smoke point oil just to lightly coat the bottom. And then I'm gonna tip the skillet and watch how fast the oil runs. That's gonna tell me whether or not the pan's ready. This is running like water, which means the skillet's good and hot. So we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken. That initial sizzle lets you also know that your pan is hot enough, which is awesome. All right, so we're just gonna let this sit here undisturbed and get a nice brown on it. Meanwhile, we're gonna season the other side. Cool. So if you're cooking, let's say, a whole pack of chicken or you want to have some chicken for the week to eat on, uh, what I will do is take my pan here and I'll have a sheet pan next to me and I will just get a good crust on both sides of the chicken and then transfer it all to the pan and then keep going. And then you have a sheet pan full of brown chicken and you just slide it into the oven to finish it. So for this one though, we're just doing two so we can just use the same pan, save a dish. Um, a little bit more about brining and what it does. So there's a lot of controversy over the actual science of how it tenderizes the chicken, but my favorite description is it is the salt in the water 
the salt pushes into the chicken and starts to break down the fibers inside of it, which tenderizes it. It also helps it hold some of its moisture. So that's really, it's kind of like having insurance against overcooking your chicken. Because if you cook a chicken breast to exactly 165 degrees, which is the temperature that it's done at, that is gonna be a juicy, tender chicken breast. But it's really hard to get it there, especially if you're feeding a bunch of people or you just don't wanna worry about having to, um, you don't wanna worry about having dry chicken breast. So brining is a really simple way to make sure it's gonna come out great. So it's been in there for about a minute now. Let's just check it. I'm gonna pull and see if it comes easily off the pan. We're still sticking a little bit, which means it needs another minute to sit there. When it's ready to be flipped over and it has that nice brown crust, if my pan was hot enough, it should release easily. And that's when I know it's ready to flip over. Tip this, redistribute the oil. So this one's coming off easily. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a flip. Awesome. This one needs another second. Uh, so this has a really nice crust. You could go even darker on it and let it go for a little bit longer if you'd like. But this is perfectly acceptable. Um, what the brown is doing, it's caramelizing the sugars, which is gonna give you that depth of flavor. That's why chicken with a crust like this is gonna taste so much better than let's say a boiled chicken. It's not my favorite. <laughs> All right, easy release. And you can see how nicely brown that is. So now we're just gonna let it caramelize a little bit on this side, and then we're gonna stick this whole pan in the oven and let it finish cooking. My oven's preheated to 350 degrees. And it will probably, these will probably take anywhere from eight to 18 minutes. So we'll start with eight minutes and see where they're at. And our ending temperature is 165 degrees. All right, so once we've let it set there, get a little bit of a crust on it. We're gonna turn the burner off. This pan is gonna stay really hot, so it'll continue to caramelize the bottom side of it. So get yourself a hot pad or a dry towel and just toss it right into the oven. All right, we'll check back in in about eight minutes. So the chicken ended up taking just a little over 18 minutes, um, but it's ready to go. You definitely wanna give it at least five minutes to rest when it comes out of the oven. Rest your meat before you cut into it. When you add heat to a protein, all the fibers tense up like this, which means it will be tough if you cut into it immediately. So let it rest, the fibers will relax, the juices will all come out to the edges, and you're gonna have a beautiful piece of chicken. So we've got one of our chicken breasts here. It's gonna come in with the knife and give it a slice. Beautiful. Pull this up, you can see it just looks super tender and juicy. This is gonna be awesome. I pulled these at about 160 to 163 degrees. They have a little bit of carryover cooking, so they definitely hit around 165. And this is ready to go. You can cool it, keep it in your fridge, or serve it on a salad, wraps, whatever you have in mind. That is brine baked and seared chicken breast. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos, you can head to cleavercooking.com. We've got a lot more tutorials and recipes there. Um, drop any questions for me in the comments below. I'd love to answer those for you. And hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more.